tell me how Erica Lust began. Tell me like <laughs> how you started this whole thing uh, and how you got to where you are now. Well, it's obviously a long story. Uh, it That's started. Okay. We got a long time. <laughs> we got a long time. It started we got 35 minutes. <laughs> Perfect. So <laughs> da, 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 here we go. Once upon a time, a little girl <laughs> lived in Sweden. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was born in Stockholm. I mm-hmm. grew up in Sweden. And uh, I guess it, for me, it kind of all started on a personal level. Uh, at uh, my first years at university, I was young. I was already a young feminist. I was studying political science. I was interested in sexuality and trying to figure out who I was and mm-hmm. what I liked. And I turned to to try to, to, you know, to, to find out more. Mm. And uh, my first experience was that my body did get turned on by the images that I was looking at. Uh, and that felt good. But at the same time, I didn't like too much most of the images that mm. I was presented to. Mm. Uh, and I saw this classical kind of structure in them where everything was around the men and around their sexuality. And the women tended to be used as some kind of vehicle for, you know, the men's sexuality, their role uh, were mostly to satisfy others, to satisfy men. Mm-hmm. But so few times it was really about the women and about their sexuality. Mm-hmm. And that frustrated me. And it made me feel like, no, this is not who I am. And this I can't identify with this. I am not this kind of, you know, blow up doll or this kind of uh, person that's only there for him. Uh, so I, uh, I I started to 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 look, you know, for 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 more text on 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 the internet about pornography. I wanted to find more more things, and then I came across this book by Linda Williams. She's a professor, film professor at uh, Berkeley. Mm-hmm. University, and she had written a book called Hardcore, The Frenzy of the Visible. Okay. And that book really opened up my mind about that porn wasn't only porn, that it was actually a whole discourse about sexuality and about, you know, masculinity and femininity and the roles we play and the power play and the power structure. And uh, in this book, she also presented me to um, to Candida Royale, uh, uh, a director who unfortunately died a few years ago. Uh, but she was kind of the pioneer in a genre of pornography for women. She mm-hmm. uh, had had the same ideas that I had growing up before me, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, she started to make her films already in the 80s and they were totally focused on female pleasure. Mm-hmm. And then when I found her films and I saw that it was really possible to think from another perspective, mm-hmm. uh, that was really what kind of Triggered me and challenged me into start my own process of uh, thinking about how could I make a film that I would like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that happened years after. Because yeah, did you first, have any experience in film at this point? Uh, not other than watching. Okay. <laughs> film was, you know. So you knew like kind of what you wanted to do, but you didn't necessarily know how to go about it. Exactly. Maybe. Film was a great passion for me. Uh, I mean, really, I had always, always enjoyed film. I had been a lot in contact with theater and dance. Mm-hmm. My little sister uh, was a ballet dancer at a very young age. Uh, and I had three tickets to the theater uh, <laughs> always. And that was, you know my biggest passions when when I was a kid really right. uh, but uh, but then I was a good student and you know I started university I did this great career in political science yeah you and, gotta pick a safe major yes you don't want to pick course. one of those artsy majors <laughs> you'll we want to be a starving student yeah, your whole life that, everybody told artist. me that and yeah. then I mean I am also a very driven person and I you know I wanted to work in in women's rights mm. uh, and I wanted to work in international national organizations and that was my idea that's why I you know I traveled I learned languages 
Uh, I uh, went down to study at the university in Complutense in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And then I decided that I wanted to move to Barcelona because I had fallen in love with Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Barcelona is still my one of my biggest loves in the world. <laughs> I love my city. It's so I've fantastic. I've never been. Oh, you I've never been to, to Spain. Come. Spain's like the only like big European country I haven't been to yet, oh my which God. is a shame. I know. It is wonderful, really. I, I will make it out there someday. Yeah, come, come, come. I will. <laughs> and 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 then I ended up in Barcelona. But in Barcelona, I had a difficulty really to find to find a job because mm -hmm. uh, there was no big international organizations, mm -hmm. and I didn't talk Catalan mm -hmm. uh, because in Barcelona there's two official languages: it's okay. Catalan and Spanish. And I had learned Spanish, but I didn't talk Catalan, so it was difficult to to manage that political career of mine. Yeah. And then I had friends working uh, in production companies, advertisement, basically, a little television, a little films, and I uh, needed a job. So they got me a job as a runner, a mm. driver. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started in the film business, wow. driving cars. I went to the airport, I picked up actors, I draw them to the set and, you know... That kind of uh, things, bringing coffee, doing, you know, juices and organizing. And then little by little, I uh, I got to work as a production assistant, as a mm -hmm. production manager, as a location manager and as a producer. And doing the work, I learned how to make films. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I absolutely loved it, mm -hmm. that I, you know, I loved every second of it. Uh, so I went to film school during nighttime and I started to learn everything I could about, you know, directing and how to work with actors and camera equipment and and everything I could. And I, um, I had this opportunity to make a short film. Uh, this is in the year 2004. And I wrote a little script uh, for a film called The Good Girl. Mm -hmm. And I uh, gathered a little money and I filmed it. And that was my big debut 